It seems, from what I've seen and experienced, it's pretty diverse. And uh, um, Montreal fans, are, for us, have always been super enthusiastic. Um, I think Canada in general, with bands like Rush and Triumph coming out of here early, you know, in the 70s, kind of set the tone for progressive music. So we always seem to have a warm and enthusiastic audience in Montreal. It seems more open and diverse than ever, for sure, compared to where it was, if you were comparing it to the past. It's definitely broader and more diverse, and there's a lot more complexity and interesting experimenting going on, and there's, it seems like the audiences are embracing. So it's, it's come a long way, uh, if you're going to call it even metal at this point, right? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, on all accounts, from the audience having an open enough mind to kind of get into these mesh up of styles um, to the musicianship getting better in bands production getting better in bands you know it's kind of it's really interesting for us having taken uh, you know a 10 year plus break kind of from the metal scene coming back to see the environment that is out there right now I mean uh, because you know we, we were one of those bands that every once in a while would get just you play heavy we don't like this what's going on and it's like now you have country polka you know jazz influences in this in metal dance electronica elements you know world elements you know classical elements of course um yeah it's it's great you know what i mean i mean especially for a band like us that kind of i don't want to say bad taste was left in our mouth when we when we broke up but it was it wasn't as open as as it is now absolutely and so that's you know, it's really refreshing and, and inspiring to see actual growth in the metal scene. Because to me, the metal scene always kind of, musicians nod at it, you know what I mean? Like it's not a legitimate form of music or, you know, technically it's so you're just playing bar chords or, you know, you're playing a dumb blast beat or whatever. And it's like now you have these guys that are just, you know, excellent musicians playing unorthodox styles of music. So it's, yeah, it's it's definitely... Um, a trip to see it ha have, having evolved the way it has, you know. Oh, definitely, of course, yeah. I mean, it's a, it, across all styles of music, I think. I don't think it's just, you know, subjected to, to the metal scene. Um, it's just I think it's a more extreme case of it displaying the differences when you see it because you don't think of metal as like having these influences but i think you know you hear pop music having these eastern elements and the, you know what i mean like i think everyone's kind of evolving and growing and it's it's good to see the metal scene do that you know it's really good to see the metal scene do that because who wants to play the same thing all the time right i mean you know i don't know that's my opinion To play the same thing and do the same thing is, I, I don't know, to me it's, there's no growth there. I, you know, I want to play different kinds of music. I think it's just the natural progression for us. I think we've always kind of been that band that kind of changed, even from demos to focus, focus to trace and air, trace and air to retrace. You know, there's always going to be some sort of change. Um, and in that change, there's going to be the backlash from some fans that, you know, want to hear the same thing and want to hear focus part two. And, you know, um, and, you know, maybe in some way we're going to help them grow a little bit with their ears but um, for the most part I mean real cynic fans get it and expect the unexpected so I mean, what do you think I mean I still think it's really early too because the EP is just coming out the fans are just kind of hearing the new stuff but I mean we, we try not to read the comments and the feedback too much but it's been it's been really good you know yeah I think it's positive so I mean, we don't we tr we don't pay much attention to it really. I mean, I think we're just doing what we like, you know. And I think the closer we get to being honest to what we appreciate and enjoy as musicians, the more it's going to resonate with something in them. So, the, our duty is just to try and be as true to ourselves and to a creative process as possible, and the rest is in the universe's hands, you know. Yeah, I mean that way it is pure. Even though it's you can see it as selfish, it's like. If you're really enjoying it and loving it, you're going to give it 100%. And why would you not give 100% to what you do, you know? So, Not really. You know, it's nice, it's nice when you read a review and the person gets it and, you know, understands the lineage. And then, you know, you hear somebody reviewing the record that hasn't even heard the other stuff and, you know, they're forming an opinion. It's kind of, 
hard to take that seriously. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, it's like to, to pay attention to that stuff is, you know, for, it's, for, for me, it's just a barometer. It's just kind of giving me a general idea of what the people like. But, you know, it shows when, who shows up at your shows and it shows with how many records you sell. And it's, you know, I mean, to pay attention to that, you, you would just turn you into an erotic freak. And it's, you know, it's... We're an erotic we're, freak. We're as you know. enough. Yeah, exactly. It's already over the top as it is. So, yeah, it's a fine line. When, when you get people like older um, that were you know around in the early '90s when we did Human, who still come up and say that this you know record changed the way I think focus, this changed the way I approached playing, you know, it, it's always great to hear that. That's the best compliment. Um, and then to get it from a 13 year old who's now the new generation saying the same thing. That's really special. I mean, I think when we were making that record, funny enough, it kind of was like a cynic record where we were being selfish with our playing as well. Chuck was really open to that. And, uh, you know, for us, it's, it's been a blessing, you know, to, to have contributed to that. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the best compliment you can get is just someone getting something from your music that's positive. Intense? I don't know about intense other than a byproduct. The kid actually had us sign his arm and he got tattoos of our signature or the Cynic logo on his arm. That to me is a little extreme. Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't had anybody try to commit suicide or make some sort of statement, but, uh, you know, I think, I think that's probably as extreme as it gets. To me, that's kind of, that's pretty crazy. Well, it is. That's dedicated. That's, yeah, well, Crazy not with a bad connotation. Crazy is in like, yeah, that's that's a fan, you know, like Well, it starts with him. I'll let him explain his process. Um. I mean, I don't know. We don't really understand it ourselves, you know. I mean we just it basically starts with these little demos and Sean gets his ear around the basic kind of harmonic, melodic components. <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh, and then we take it into the room and we play, and we just kind of play it over and over, and it's almost like a series of improvisations over a skeletal thing and until it feels right. So it, it's just a, kind of an on, you know, deconstruction, s subtraction, addition, you know, you're just building it Taking, taking it apart and putting it back together a bunch of times until it feels ready. And there's no way to put your finger on that until, you know, we, we just, <laughs> we kind of just do a, you know, it's like a bunch of demos and then we, it finally kind of gets there and then it's, it's right. I don't, I don't really under, I don't think you can really intellectualize it. I don't know. Well, no, because, you know. I mean, a lot of the times we don't even know what it's really going to sound like until we're in the control room mixing the thing. I mean, to be quite honest, um, you know, he'll come to me with like that blueprint of the song and it's usually just acoustic guitar and vocal. And then it's like, OK, do we put it in three, seven, five? Does it stay in four? You know what I mean? And then, it, we, you know, I kind of really active with him in the arrange the ranging and the piecing together of the stuff. It's usually a pretty realized harmonic and melodic idea. Um, it's usually a complete song, but then it's how do we put it through the Paul and Sean filter and, um, you know, and with the advent of, you know, digital workstations and the music technology, we get a, a pretty good snapshot of, as to what we're doing. We both have studios and mics and gear, and, and so... Um, even though it's a lot of time does change in the studio again we you know we, we can actually get pretty much in there and see what the the pieces and the parts are and and uh, and then realize it you know 